Hey everyone, Dr. Uh, Tom here, Full Circle Coaching and Consulting, and uh, I'm here tonight to chat with you uh, about something that's very important in, the, uh, in, in our experience as Full Circle Coaches. Um, it's, we're talking about partnership, navigating the Divine Feminine and Sacred Masculine. And joining me here because of her extreme expertise on this topic is uh, Coach Dodie. Dodie, welcome. Thank you very much. Yes, I am an expert on the Divinely Feminine side. You definitely are. And uh, one of the things that we highly value at Full Circle is that our coaching team does have a, uh, maybe not perfectly balanced, but a balance of the divine feminine and the sacred masculine, right? Um, and so again, just to give you context, if you haven't uh, seen some of our other uh, recordings around uh, partnership, right? This falls underneath our four pillared model uh, in, our, in our Full Circle model of how to you know, live your most authentic life and express your greatest potential both personally and professionally, vision, focus systems and team is our model and uh certainly this piece falls largely underneath the focus pillar Dodi, right yes it's uh focus pillar is uh around focus blocks that may be interfering with your ability to express your greatest you know human potential to the world either personally or professionally and again how this shows up in a partnership scenario is based upon people that are just you know you're 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 you know, you're annoyed, you're frustrated, you're pissed off, things aren't flowing well, there is a lack of harmony and flow in the relationship, and it creates that, that block, that focus block that takes up energy, um, robs your hard drive of space, and just annoys you. We call them ESOLs, Energetic Space Occupying Lesions. So again, I apologize if that's a repeat for some of you that have watched many of our recordings, but I think it's important that when we start this recording, just give you context for why we're even talking about this topic, right? Um, again, um, I have been involved in an intimate partnership for um, married for as of this recording 35 years and in the relationship for closer to 40. Uh, Dodie, your relationship's got uh, the plus 30 year mark on it too, right? Yep, it's grade seven. I was 12 years old and we started dating Mark. So that was 33 years ago. We've been married for 20. Yeah, so again, Dodie and I have not only got the uh, contextual framework and, and certainly the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the theoretical side of this, but we both lived you know, in the trenches, so to speak, of an intimate relationship and have uh, lived it when it's, uh, you know, not so great and lived it when it is, uh, you know, beyond awesome, right? So again, mm -hmm. uh, we share with you our, our thoughts, both from the theoretical as well as the practical, uh, with our entire goal being to give you a uh, context and frame for how to live your best life, how to live your most authentic life uh, by, by having the most um, amazing intimate partnership that you want to have, right? So again, when we talk masculine and feminine, Dodi, are we just talking male, female, or are we talking more about energy here? It is definitely energy. There's the masculine energy, the feminine energy, and it doesn't necessarily mean like male, female, because a person, whomever they are, male or female, can have energies of both at different times in their relationships as well. Uh, um, so if we, as we are talking through this and we say, he, she, we're not necessarily meaning that because we know that there are partnerships that are same sex and, um, you know, there is no male, female, but it, there is masculine and feminine energy for sure. So we just wanted to frame that, that we are talking about the energy of the masculine and the energy of the feminine. Yeah, well stated, Dodi, right? And again, uh, uh, you know, within an individual, as Dodi just stated, I mean, we, we all have both. Uh, certainly, you know, uh, I push a lot more masculine energy than feminine energy, but also that part of me that is the, the healer, the, the you know, health provider, uh, the father, right? You know, there is some times where I can touch more of that nurturing uh, side, which is more stereotypical feminine. We're going to talk about sort of, again, more stereotypical traits, Dodi, right? To create the frame for people here. Uh, but again, everybody has a bit of both. It's just whether you show, you know, more or less. Uh, Dodi, as she already stated, uh, is when I think of a Wikipedia definition of the divine feminine, I think of Dodi. I see her picture in there, right? Because she is, she is all, of, uh, all of those things that make up the, the best parts of the divine feminine, right? So again, good to create that, that frame and that context. And even within a partnership, Dodi, right? We tend to find that it, that it dances, right? And you, you've had some experience with this when your, your husband was, was quite ill, right? I mean, I think that would yeah. be a great story to share. Yeah. So, um, you know, part of being divinely feminine or feminine in general is that you're in the flow state. It's very present time conscious. You just want it, um, everything, you're very nurturing. You just, you actually, at times you feel like um, you want to make sure that there's a masculine energy kind of caring for you and guiding you along the path where, and 
so several years, seven years ago now, uh, Mark was diagnosed with a brain tumor and he had to have surgery immediately. And so his strong masculine role in our relationship of, you know, being the income provider, guiding the family as such, you know, getting, setting some goals for our family, very being task driven, kind of all shifted. So then I became the person that, you know, went to work, did, it, provided for the family as such, very goal, masculine, energy driven. And he kind of took over some of the things that I was doing, you know, right, well, and when he got better, but taking care of the kids and doing the laundry and making the meals and, and those kind of roles. And we sort of switched. But when we switched, we also changed the polarity of our relationship quite dramatically, actually. Like there was times where I wasn't even really attracted to him for, oh, I've got a call. Let me just decline that. Sorry. Um, are you still there? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, it, where our, our relationship actually dramatically changed because of the polarity shift. Uh, and then it was hard to go back together again because when he started working and then I was still sort of in a masculine role, um, he was less feminine in role and we didn't have that polarity either. So it was challenging at times, but once you figure it out, you know, my natural ability is that feminine energy and his natural go-to is the masculine. Then our relationship was much stronger. Yeah, for sure. You brought up a couple of pieces that I think are just worth uh, just, just flushing out a tiny bit. You talked about polarity, which is a, a really central concept to the masculine feminine. Right. And so just for those that aren't familiar with that construct, it's like uh, the masculine is, you know, the positive, it's just for frame of reference, not, not that it's any better or worse, but, you know, positive aspect of a pole and the feminine being the negative. And those, when you put two magnets, you know, that have polarity uh, beside each other, like positive and negative, they're attracted, right? So there is that attraction piece, uh, both on the physical plane, as well as the intellectual plane, as well as the emotional plane, as well as, you know, all over the place when you talk about that polarity. And so, uh, and really it's, again, not one isn't better or worse than the other one. It's not a moral discussion. It's just about an awareness. So you have an awareness of your partner and how they naturally are, as you said, Dodie, right? It allows you to relax into your natural essence. And then the best of both worlds comes up. What I, we find commonly happens as coaches, Dodie, right? Is that we get people who are in the, in the you know, stereotypical uh, aspect of, say, a, someone that's largely got feminine energy and is the caregiver at home and stuff, but also goes to work, right? So they're pushing that masculine energy at work and then they come home and it's like they got to remember to shift gears to shift back into their more natural state, the more feminine state, so that they don't create, you know, uh, contrast and they don't create chaos because there's an old saying in, in uh, self development says when two things are the same, one of them isn't necessary. So if you got two, you know, two uh, energies banging against each other's heads, you just, you know, you're just going to get a sore head, right? So again, that polarity piece is something I think is, is, is really important to bring up. You also talked, Dodie, too, about, you know, sort of that stereotypical kind of uh, energy of the masculine and the feminine. So let's just, let's just lay that out. Uh, I'll certainly talk about the masculine because I've got, you know, more experience with it. So you already brought up a few things, Dodie, right? So uh, masculine uh, is very much stereotypically interested in us being, uh, having a state of freedom, either literal, literal or figurative, right? And so freedom, a lot of their behaviors is around uh, creating more freedom, whether it's short-term or long-term, the driver is, is that sense of freedom. So stereotypical masculine energy looks at things like um, vision, right? The long-term vision for either the business or the, you know, or the family. Um, they talk about goal setting, they talk about priorities, they talk about economics, they talk about industry, they talk about, uh, you know, the future and direction and drive and ambition and, you know, all of that kind of stuff is very much stereotypical masculine energy. Um, masculine is also very much more about uh, risk taking and adventure and competition and stuff because it's a way for them to sort of prove themselves and prove that they're, they're good enough and they're strong enough to be, you know, uh, A, strong enough for their feminine partner. Uh, feminine energy partner, uh, but also too, just that it the, gives them that sense of, of mental and or physical freedom to just have space and just like stretch their arms and, and be in that space. They also, much to the, the very feminine's uh, demise, unless they understand, you know, why, uh, masculine's also very much like to the point, direct problem solving. They love to solve problems. We love to solve problems. This was one, Dodie, from my life that when I understood this, it made, just made my wife and I's relationship so much easier. Because 
uh, again, stereotypically masculine loves to solve problems. So I would come home and um, Shelly would have a problem that she had in the day, whether it was with the kids or the home or a, a contractor or, or something in her business. And uh, I would listen when really all she wanted me to do was listen, right? Because as, as you're going to get into describing, Dodie, like one of uh, feminine's base premise drives is relationship and harmony, right? Mm -hmm. So all she wanted to do was relate and connect with me. And all I wanted to do was solve the problem. And so she would, you know, da, 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 da. I said, oh, well, honey, all you got to do is da, 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 da. And then she'd go, you idiot, you asshole. You, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, we'd be into this conflict. And I'm like, what the hell did I do? All I did was solve a problem. I thought you wanted the problem solved. She didn't want the problem solved. Because in her mind, it really wasn't a problem. She just wanted to relate and connect, right? So again, there's one from my own life that uh, comical in hindsight, but at the time, oh my God, we must have had, I don't know how many discussions slash fights we had over something as silly as just not understanding the difference between, you know, the masculine, masculine and the feminine, and feminine, right? Let's talk a little mm -hmm. bit, though. Let's lay out some of the feminine energy characteristics. Well, the feminine energy on the opposite of the masculine. It's pretty simple. simple. Yep. <laughs> I mean, we're nurturing, we're healing, very, uh, you know, present time consciousness, fun loving. It's about communications and relationships. Um, definitely easily distracted and distracted by the things that have a high value for us. So commonly, you know, the masculine energy wants to do something, but that clearly isn't a high value. We, it's much... Um, it, it is more important for us to do the things which you don't perceive as high value, but for us it does, right? So you're into that. And naturally healing, we, we offer a lot of support and ask. We're very patient, creative. Um, you know, we, we, it's all about feelings for us. It's all about, you know, it's the feeling. It's not the black and white. It, it's the emotional feelings that go along with that. Uh, for, for communication parts, we often listen to tone. The words don't necessarily mean a lot, but the tone and that, that does, or, you know, very flexible, very flowy. I know we often talk about this, Tom, how the masculine energy is the riverbanks and it allows that feminine energy just to flow through it when the guidance is there. And, and you also talked about how you are there for the feminine energy, the masculine energy is there for the feminine energy. The feminine energy will test it for sure. Make yeah. sure that the masculine energy is strong and solid, kind of like those, you know, ocean waves crashing against a rock. Like that, that feminine energy needs some rock stability in the relationship. And you also talked about, you know, Shelly wanting to talk. Um, there's been a couple clients where we've had this discussion where, you know, the, the partner's at home and the other person's coming back from work and the partner at home wants to just express what their day was like, but the other partner hasn't even arrived home yet. And all they want to do is talk about, and then they're just sort of trying to decompress. And that was a huge shift that uh, someone did in their relationship is that they gave a bit of time. They had a communication that, you know, what drives me crazy is I need 10 minutes when I get home just to decompress. And, and the, you know, the person that was at home was thinking, they don't want to listen to me. They're, they're not listening. They're not fe feeling they were being heard, but in actuality, they just needed a bit of time. So that was a big thing on their communication was to shift that, 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 that feminine energy was able to express itself when the masculine energy was ready to receive it. And then it was really easy because then they could listen with no problem and both were good. In fact, I think Mark and I used to do that. Like if he came home and I could sense that, I'd be like, why don't you just go to the bedroom for 10 minutes? And then when you're ready to arrive here, come back out. And, and that seemed to work really well because otherwise I'd be like, how's your day? And then the kids did this and all of this stuff. And he's like, I can't take any more information at the moment. So there is that, that balance of the masculine and feminine energy and understanding what, what is important for each other and what makes them tick. For sure. Yeah, no, well stated, Dodie, right? Uh, all right, well, let's talk about one of the other ones, Dodie, in the, in the last uh, sort of part of this recording. Um, here's one that we run into all the time as coaches, right? Uh, it looks like some version of, oh, something just fell behind my computer here. Uh, it sounds like some version of this. The masculine sees the feminine who, you know, and this is one of my relationship, right? It's, it's still after all these years together, right? Um, lack of follow through, procrastination, lack of time awareness. Masculine sees feminine, making commitments to things, and then she doesn't follow through, right? Um, and then the feminine sees like this overbearing, anal retentive, you know, overly time conscious driving guy that's just a, like annoying her, right? So 
again, there's, there's a few variations on the theme, but we've definitely seen that a lot, right? So here's some things that I've observed, Dode, and certainly chime in at any point, right? But why does, well, let me ask you the question, Dodie, in your experience, if masculine has something that they value, that they want support on and or delegate, why is it that the divine feminine would say yes to that, even though she doesn't highly value it? Why would she say yes? Why would she commit to something she doesn't really highly value? Um, mostly because she doesn't want to disappoint them. That's one big thing, right? Is that she wants to feel loved and appreciated. And so she's helping because we often are very nurturing and giving. If we say, yes, I'll help you and, and do that, then and we don't want to disappoint the masculine energy. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I, which I've seen in countless client relationships over time, right? So, so what, one of the things, uh, those of you that are watching this, that are, you know, have more of the feminine energy, uh, be careful what you say yes to, right? Be careful what it is that you commit to when the masculine energy is asking you to be part of something, commit to something, help out with something or, or follow through with something. Because again, the masculine lives in that world of like um, structure and direction and linearity and this leads to that and, you know, linear logic. Whereas the feminine, as you stated beautifully earlier, Dodi, they, they live in, 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 in the present time conscious. They don't have to live in the future so much, right? They allow the masculine to do that, the masculine's energy to do that, so that they can be present time conscious and really be in, in uh, relationship, in flow, in connection, right? Because they value that you know, so much. So, so it's, a, it's a slippery slope because the feminine values the relationship and wants to you know, keep the partner happy. So they commit to things that they really don't, they really likely should never have committed to, right? So that's one, you know, part of that dynamic, you know, to, to watch out for, depending upon whether you're on the masculine or the, you know, the feminine side of it. Now, I've also seen masculine, matter of fact, one of our masculine energy coaches, come, this comes up a lot in, in his uh, particular relationship, no names mentioned, um, but uh, where, you know, he gets frustrated because his very feminine partner like can just get into like Instagram or Facebook and scroll Instagram or Facebook for hours on end. And, and how is it Dodi, that uh, the divine feminine just like, you know, sometimes just loses track of time. What, what is that? Are they just trying to piss their partner off or, or what, what drives that? Maybe some. I mean, it, when you're talking about Facebook and Instagram, it's the connection piece. They feel like they're connected with their friends, other families. They're feeling the emotions that are coming through the pictures and the words that are there. And that allows them, again, just to connect with their feminine side. Yeah, for sure. And so again, uh, masculine energy partners, they're not doing it to piss you off. They just literally get so into it, the, the vibration, the feeling, the tone of the connection piece that they, they, and they live so beautifully in the present. Thank God, Dodie, right? Because they, like, you know, with my uh, intimate partner, allows me to, to be more present, to be here, because, I mean, she lives there most of the time, right? Whereas I tend to be that, you know, as you said, the, the riverbanks guiding the future and the vision, you know, for, for where it goes. So they're not doing it to annoy. Um, they're just doing it to, to get that connection, to get that relationship. Because again, as we stated earlier in this conversation, that's one of the prime directors for the feminine body, right? They value that connection and that harmony. And, and when they can get that, whether it's through social media or otherwise, my experience in coaching now for almost 25 years is that if the divine feminine is getting nurtured, if she's getting her cup filled, so to speak, from her partner, that she might not need as much outside of the relationship connection, Dodie, right? Have you noticed that as well with clients? Yes, absolutely. I know that um, Mark and I in particular, instead of like date night, we have morning coffee. And mm. that is our time to connect because we've learned over the years that after Mark's done a full day, he is that communication at the end of the night is not where he <laughs> excels at. <laughs> but in the morning, fresh, we have morning coffee every morning and that's where we get to have our conversations and that connection piece. So when either one of us to come home at night and we're just looking on phones, it's not as much of a push button because we've already had the connection piece. So we feel fulfilled within our relationship in comparison yeah. to not being fulfilled. Well, and another, just to bring in another little piece of some of the work we do at Full Circle, Dodie, right, is that idea of our love tanks, right? And if our partner mm -hmm. is filling our love tank, then, you know, you can withdraw a fair bit of juice from the love tank before you actually, 
you know, becomes a heated, you know, contentious kind of a thing. So again, being right. aware of your partner, we did another recording, we talked about communication, Dodie, and knowing how your partner communicates, communicating in their, in their language, so to speak, with their, no understanding their personality, understanding their core values. There's exercises we recommended, which would really help to have meaningful dialogue. Because I mean, there's nothing wrong with quantity, Dodie, right? But uh, I certainly have a, I'm a big proponent for quality as well, right? As, as you just said, you and Mark learned that Better quality time in the morning fills your tank for the day, at least the day, if not longer. And in the evening, you don't have to have so much, you know, connection time because it's already been met somewhere else, right? And that's just mm -hmm. uh, a byproduct of knowing each other and having that 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 uh, awareness, and then knowing how, you know how to how to feed each other with that. One other piece, so for the feminine, just before we let this go and, and wind this recording up, Dodie, right? Is sometimes the feminine uh, when we you know we talk about these things that she commits to and then maybe doesn't follow through with the way the masculine thought they would. Uh, one of the things that I, I hear back from my partner sometimes, yeah, but why, why, is that, why does it get you so upset? Why are you so upset about it? It seems like such a little thing. It's just a, a little project that didn't get done when we thought it was going to get done, right? What feminine needs to understand is that masculine very much um, works in binary codes, works in zeros and ones. Anything that isn't a clear win is a loss, right? Mm -hmm. And some of the confidence and, and self-worth that comes with, with being able to accomplish things that we feel we chose to accomplish, we wanted to accomplish, if we don't get that accomplished, then, the, then it's almost like a series of dominoes starts to fall in our mind, right? And it's like, well, if I didn't get that done, then maybe I couldn't get this done. If I couldn't get that done, then this will happen. And then before I know it, you know, we're broke living in a cardboard box under an expressway somewhere and I can't provide for my yeah. family and, right? Complete and so failure. Complete, complete failure. failure. I'm a wash up. So what happens is their creativity drops, their confidence drops. Uh, their polarity drops and it becomes a big ESOL and a big focus block. So again, it's, I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying it's, it's right or wrong. I'm just explaining a very common pattern we've seen in coaching over all these many years at Full Circle that uh, if, if the feminine understands why the masculine uh, cares so much about whether the task gets accomplished, then they can uh, at least understand it and have dialogue around it. And just to circle back on something, Dodie, I think uh, to tie in the core values piece from our other recording is that if you can help any human being, but particularly in this case, your partner, uh, understand why it connects to your values that this thing you're asking them to support you on uh, gets done, and or you're wise enough to see how uh, and can communicate to them and their values as to how if they help you, you know, accomplish their piece of the project, to use that as an example, it serves their values, your mutual purpose, wow, then I think you've got a winning combination, right? It's that, right. it's that supporting of the values piece and spending the time to link those two things together that I think has really helped solve this particular dilemma. Because boy, this is one we see over and over and over again at Full Circle Dodi, right? And, and the feminine energy is like, well, I've offered my help. Like that, that's enough to feel like the connection piece and this, I've supported you, but even though it didn't get done, right? We don't look at that as a failure. We, we've said, yes, I'll help you. It's just got a little distracted probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in our family, it's squirrel. You know, oh, yeah. yeah right so, uh, all right. Well, listen, Dodie, I think that's uh, more than enough material for this recording. Uh, any uh, closing thoughts or, or comments uh, before we start to wrap this up? No, I think that was well done. I think we nailed it, Dodie. So, listen, if you're uh, not a client of ours and uh, you uh, enjoyed this recording, would like to get more of them, um, please just you know, hit the subscribe button below to the side, wherever it's going to show up on this recording. And uh, we'd love to be able to get these into your inbox on a regular basis. So it's pretty uh, simple to subscribe to our channels, uh, social media channels, and uh, become a part of our world of influence. Of course, if you have a question or you'd like to follow up, uh, or you have a yeah but about anything that we've shared in this recording, please feel free to comment on this. Uh, we'd love to get into a meaningful dialogue with you. So uh, Dodi, I look forward to more of these masculine, feminine, you know, partnership communication uh, dialogues with you because A, it's a heck of a lot of fun. B, um, you've got tons of experience and uh, I think that we uh, feed well off each other to give the, uh, you know, sort of both sides of the story. So Dodi, thanks again Absolutely. for helping and uh, wherever you are in the world, gang, enjoy. We will uh, chat with you again real, real, real soon. Thanks, everybody. Our mission at Full Circle Coaching and Consulting is to awaken individuals to the power of authentic expression and help them realize their full potential, both personally and professionally. Without a cookie cutter approach, we help you design and manifest your most authentic dream life, resulting in you earning more money and you having more time with your loved ones. You don't need to learn anything new in order to have the business and life you desire. You need to unlearn and shed all the unsupportive beliefs and behaviors 
that are subconsciously sabotaging your success. We help you connect with that factory installed inner guidance and then reverse engineer the steps it takes to go from where you are to where your heart is calling you to be. This is our specialty. Let us help. When you're ready, connect with us through the links in the description below or go to our website at fullcirclecoachingandconsulting.com.